International President. He is a professor and holder of Robert L. Whiting Professorship in the Department of Petroleum Engineering at Texas A&M University. As you all know, Texas A&M is the Mecca for all petroleum engineers. He holds a joint appointment in the Department of Geology and Geophysics at Texas A&M. And he served as a director of SP International. He has been awarded eight major awards by SPE and he has served, he has prepared approximately 160 technical papers. And moving forward from this, I would like to share that this section was formed in uh, March 2005 and we'll go, we'll uh, give a small video, very small video of our section journey and SPE history. Thank you. Society of Petroleum Engineers International, SPE. Officially founded in 1957, SPE's predecessor organizations date from the birth of the oil industry in the late 1880s. SPE is a not-for-profit professional society whose members are engaged in energy resources development and production. More than 140,600 members in 144 countries participate in 201 sections and 396 student chapters. SPE's membership includes more than 70,000 student members. Efforts initiated in 1982 with the ONGC Top Management Support First Section at Ahmedabad, SPE India Section established in 1986 followed by North India and Mumbai Section. New Delhi Section established after almost 15 years on March 13, 2005, beginning of accelerated growth of SPE in India. India 1986, North India 1989, Mumbai 1990, New Delhi 2005. Three more sections at Chennai, North East India in Assam and Bangalore established in quick succession. Chennai 2006, North East 2007, Bangalore 2007. SPE New Delhi Section 1. Brief about section. Section was started on March 13, 2005. Today the section has nearly 200 members. Has been organizing regular meeting. Section has been awarded SPE President's Award for Section Excellence for two consecutive years. 2005 to 2006 and 2006 to 2007. First year journey. Value for all. Firmed up annual meeting calendar, 9 meetings, 11 speakers and 6 sponsors, newsletters, website www.newdelhi.spe.org, established contacts with the academia and supported setting up a student chapter at IIT Delhi. Stepping stones, kickoff meeting, December 13, 2004. Establishment of SPE New Delhi Section March 13, 2005 First Formal Meeting April 2005 Website Hosting May, June 2005 First Section Newsletter August 2005 Student Chapter Established at IIT Delhi April 2006 Family Get Together May 2006 we win President's Award for Section Excellence. SPE New Delhi Newsletters Section Leadership Chairperson M.K. Mitra A.K. Hazarika N.M. Bora D.K. Pandey S. Roy Chaudhary B.N. Talukdar Shashi Shankar V.P. Mahavar S.K. Moitra Rahul Bali Secretary Rahul Bali 
रामेंद्र सिन्हा अजय दशो स्वतंत्र मोहन सुखविंदर सिंह सोनी राजेश कुमार दीपक स्वरूप भटनागर सुखविंदर सिंह सोनी अवार्ड्स एंड रेकग्नेशन इंटरनेशनल अवार्ड्स 2007 SPE Presidents Award for Section Excellence 2011 SPE International Distinguished Member Award 2010 SPE International Distinguished Service Award So 2005 to 2000 21 in fact our uh, anniversary has been delayed because of covid so we are still into our 15 years and i would like to share with uh, you that we have supported three student chapters in india pandit din dayal upadhyay uh, pandit din dayal petroleum university which is now pandit din dayal energy university in gandhinagar rgpit in raibareli and uh, aligarh muslim university so uh, i would like uh, the dignitary sit on the dais to kindly release our 15th anniversary issue may i request uh, sheena shamina who is the only lady officer in our section and she looks after student chapters sheena works with shlambaje using the chief guest of the today's evening so we welcome you and we are humbled with your presence here today and uh, the chief guest of the today evening shri tarun kapoor ji secretary mopng to the government of india in ministry of petroleum and natural gas he is a member of indian administrative service with over 33 years experience at the state and national level before taking over as secretary mopng shri kapoor was posted as vice chairman dda he has worked as additional chief secretary in government of himachal pradesh looking after various departments from time to time like power environment and forests food and civil supplies excise pwd etc he has also worked as joint secretary in the ministry of new and renewable energy looking after national solar mission for 5 years he also worked in satluj jal vidyut nigam limited scpsc in the area of hydro power i take the privilege of inviting shri tarun kapoor ji to speak on energy transition thank you chairman sp mr bali uh, dignitaries on the dais and all the members of sp it's nice to see a good gathering of all the experts from the sector private sector and government all together and congratulations on uh, completing 15 years of the uh, delhi section uh, it's um, uh, it was very heartening and good to hear that the sp has been in the world for so many years and uh, the delhi chapter has also completed 15 years and there are there are more uh, sections in the country and you also have a students chapter or rather you've supported more than one um, universities so uh, which means that the organization is bringing together professionals and also um, 
helping you connect with the international community. It's very important for professionals to connect with each other. It's also very important to learn from each other and to connect internationally. Technology has no uh, country boundaries to, uh, and learning also has no country boundaries. And therefore, when professionals meet and professionals uh, uh, respect each other, professional, professionals acknowledge each other and uh, try to uh, work together, like when you, when you learn from each other or when you interact with each other, you're generally learning, transferring information and you're not and in such forums, you're not even um, bothering about uh, who's benefiting or, or who's making money and who's not making money. You're all sharing information. So that's a, that's a very excellent gesture. So I uh, congratulate all of you. I uh, would have liked to uh, stay here and listen to all the good deliberations for maybe full session. But somehow today's turning out to be a very heavy day. I've finished, I don't know how many meetings and recordings and whatnot, and I have to uh, go to another, um, uh, some event also. So, uh, but nevertheless, I'm very happy to be amongst all of you. So uh, I wa I've been asked to talk about energy transition. Uh, I can't talk to you about petroleum. You people know much more. I, I can, uh, I can, talk to you about energy. I've worked in this sector for a long time. So generally about energy, maybe I can talk to you about. And uh, first statement which I'd like to make is that as the world uh, progresses and as, as uh, the, uh, there is uh, more and more realization about the importance of environment, importance of the uh, good life, which, which is the ulti ultimate aim is to give life, good life to citizens, the barriers between various forms of energy would vanish. The barriers between various uh, companies catering to just a very known source of energy would also vanish. So uh, energy companies who uh, classify themselves as hydrocarbon based or or fossil fuel based and renewable based or uh, uh, electricity based now those differences would also gradually vanish and energy is energy the cons uh, now technologies are there where consumer can himself generate energy or consumer may may uh, uh, gradually try to become even independent of the uh, large uh, supply chains that, that can also happen in the future. But the point to be noted is that the consumer is becoming conscious about the environment. The consumer is also becoming conscious about the options he has. Uh, so therefore, uh, he, uh, you can't force any form of energy on a consumer. He has to be given choice. And this choice, as we move along, would be more readily and easily available. So therefore, anyone who's in the field of energy must learn about all forms of energy. And then even companies must uh, get into all forms of energy and then become energy suppliers, uh, just energy suppliers. That transition is going to happen. So therefore, uh, 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 creating differences is something which is not warranted. So energy is needed for uh, domestic use, it's needed for transport, it's needed for industry, it's needed for uh, heating and uh, for agriculture. So these would be the major uses of energy. And as we uh, move uh, from uh, in, the, in the world scenario where uh, roughly say 35% energy, primary energy is coming from oil about 23, 24 percent is coming from uh, natural gas and uh, uh, around a little more than 30 from 30 percent from coal and uh, rest from renewable and a little bit from nuclear. In India, the scenario is different where uh, still more than 50 percent is coming from coal and uh, uh, oil is a major contributor, but natural gas is just 6.3 percent. And renewable energy in terms of energy, in terms of installed capacity, we've gone to some 
maybe 16-17%, but in terms of energy, we are still at around 8% or even less than that. Uh, if we take large hydro, then the percentage becomes a little higher, but renewable energy in terms of energy has grown. Uh, it, when I was in MNRE, it used to be around uh, six to seven percent. Now it has grown by say two to three percent, and it will it will grow fast. So uh, that shift will happen. But for a very substantial change to take place in the country, it will still take a long time because uh, uh, the change at the user end also has to happen. That the change at in the uh, for example, if we have to bring about a change in the on the uh, on the other side, say transport, then the vehicles have to change, and uh, we've seen that uh, the penetration of electric vehicles has been slow all over the world, even in Scandinavian countries where people say that there is a big change. If you go there, you don't see that kind of change. So that change to EV is also going to take some time, but the change is happening. It's not that it's not happening. It is happening, and uh, uh, but it will accelerate. So uh, th that path is going to be, it, it's going to look uh, uh, like it's slow, but when it accelerates, then things might happen faster. So uh, in India, while uh, we follow the world trends, which means that more, more and more of renewable energy is going to come in, and renewable energy is going to come in faster in the grid. That probably would be the first, and uh, then renewable energy uh, can come in very fast in agriculture because in India, in the grid, 22 to 25 uh, percent of the electricity goes in the agriculture sector. It's electric motors. Still, a uh, very large number of uh, diesel-based uh, uh, pumps are also there in the agriculture sector in India. So, uh, uh, in the agriculture sector, solar can can uh, accelerate uh, uh, transition and directly uh, you, you could see that transition happening but uh, what i see is that in the grid the transition would be the fastest which means that the first uh, change which would happen is not in the not going to happen in oil and gas it's going to happen in coal so, uh, because right now uh, the uh, generation of power is in India is largely dependent on coal. So that's where the first change is going to happen. In transport, it would be slower. And uh, the other area where petrol or diesel is used is in the industry. And then uh, LPG and uh, uh, piped natural gas in, in households, mainly in cooking. So in cooking also, uh, I don't see transition happening very soon because uh, when the transition does happen in cooking, it will happen, what, what will be the transition? The transition would be that electric stove would get used more and more, uh, maybe induction uh, heaters or maybe whatever forms of uh, cooking. Indian cooking is in any case not oven based. So uh, it's more based on uh, the uh, normal stove and which is and uh, high heat, high temperatures are required. So therefore, this uh, LPG or then transition to natural gas is what is going to happen. So uh, in uh, transport and in uh, cooking, what I see is that the transition to renewables would be slower. The transition to renewables would be faster in the grid where uh, electricity is generated. And uh, the transition within hydrocarbons would obviously happen from um, uh, petrol, diesel to, from diesel first to CNG, that, because the government is pushing that. The government is pushing that, so that's bound to happen. And uh, from, say, uh, 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 LPG to uh, natural gas, piped natural gas, but uh, there, was there was a presentation, I was just into that, PPAC was just making a presentation, they've done a study on uh, LPG, and very interesting presentation they were making, and uh, the uh, domestic, uh, right now we are importing 53 or 54% of LPG also, and the imports have steadily gone up, so while 
we say that 85% of crude is imported we never add this uh, lpg also which we are importing uh, to uh, uh, such a large extent and in that presentation it came out that these imports are also not going to go down because the lpg consumption even with renewables coming in and various uh, things happening and the uh, the uh, pipe natural gas uh, penetration also increasing the lpg demand is still not going to go down they made projection uh, projections for the next uh, i think 20 years and it appears that lpg demand is not going going down uh, in fact the lp domestic lpg production according to their projection is peaking in 24 and then again it is going down slightly because maybe the refineries might uh, start producing a little more of uh, petrochemicals and and it might hit lpg so uh, therefore uh, one could say that in india the transition which is going to happen is uh, diesel would go down definitely and cng would go up that's very definite uh, we target 15% primary energy to come from natural gas that i think will happen because natural gas is easier to handle and uh, domestic production would also go up so on within the hydrocarbons this transition is very visible and uh, uh, on the renewable side the first uh, uh, transition would be that coal based power generation in the grid would go down and the uh, renewable penetration into the grid would go up how much time that would take Uh, one could uh, i think in the next 10 years there would be a very major change as far as the grid is concerned so uh, but in the motor vehicle side the penetration is going to be slow in 10 years we may see some penetration even if we go to 10% i think that will be a big achievement uh, but then after that then it will be fast then ev would come in much much faster but then the um, energy companies in this field uh have a very good network and have presence all over the world so therefore the networks and the uh, the facilities which are available can be used for all forms of energy that's the kind of transition the energy comp the uh, the um, uh, fossil fuel energy companies have to make and if that happens then uh, then uh, the transition would be healthier the transition would be uh, would be uh, would not generate bitterness or would not uh, bring surprises because something which is going to happen is going to happen and uh, investments are required and companies which are already in the energy sector are best placed not only to make investments but also to use the infra infrastructure which is already available with the uh, organizations which are into this sector then also biofuels some transition would happen towards biofuels uh, we are aiming big transition as far as india is concerned so therefore while diesel would reduce uh, because of cng petrol would reduce because of ethanol so these two things are bound to happen so uh, i will stop here my good wishes to all of you and hope you have good discussions again i repeat it is uh, good to be amongst professionals and i would have loved to stay here and listen to all of you rather than just you listening to me listening to a person who doesn't even know 10% of what you all know but then still you have to listen to me and i can't listen to you so that's a tragedy in any case my good wishes to all of you thank you mr kapoor is very humble in saying that some companies are moving to solar and the, there is a there is a challenge and the time is now as they say that if you don't have the seat at the table you become you may end up becoming part of the meal so this is high time our industry uh, thinks about it and we you know we don't become uh, archive companies and uh, with the, these words i thank you uh, mr kapoor again for your time and um, uh, he has to leave may i request mr mahavar and mr hvs ahuja to present a moment uh, token of uh, gratitude a moment to mr to mr tarun kapoor we would have loved sir if you had stayed because our next speaker is mr kamal ben nasur
Manasur holds a bachelor's degree from the Paris University and a master's degree from Ecole Polytechnic in Paris. It's an honor for us that we could have him today uh, during the 15th anniversary celebration of New Delhi section. Over to you, Kamel. Thanks for coming. Thank you very much for the kind introduction. Mr. Tarun Kapoor, Secretary Minister of uh, Petroleum and Natural Gas. Mr. Rahul Bali, Chair of SP New Delhi section. Founders of the SP New Delhi section. Past Chairs of the SP New Delhi section. Uh, section officers. Uh, it's a great pleasure and an honor to be with you today. Uh, I wish I could have been with you, but uh, we all know the circumstances. I'm going to put a few slides on, uh, and I hope they can come through. Um, can you see my slide? Yeah, so um, I wanted to, uh, to talk a little bit about SPE beyond the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, it has been a very tough year for all of us. And I've, but I won't do it before congratulating the SPE New Delhi section. Many great accomplishments have been made by the, the section and you really have set up the uh, a very high standard by winning presidential award for section excellence only one and two years uh, after your creation. I don't think that anyone, no other section has been able to do it. Uh, other great accomplishments have been mentioned like international and regional awards, the, uh, the sponsored chapters from great universities and the chapter awards. I want also to uh, add to the comments of His Excellency Mr. Kapoor and the colleague from the IEA about the uh, India energy sector being the third largest energy consuming economy today and extraordinary successes for India's energy sector. Over the last few years, access to electricity for an additional several hundred millions of people have been uh, granted. Uh, energy efficiency has made also big progress with uh, deployment of LEDs and others, and deployment of renewable solar and wind, and Mr. Kapoor was played a major role there. And uh, rephrasing some of the uh, outcome of India's uh, energy outlook, uh, it will keep it at the heart of the global energy system in terms of size and dynamism of the economy. Uh, it will see the largest increase in energy demand in the world by 2040 due to increase urbanization and shift from service industry to energy intensive ones. Last year, uh, has been a very tough year, and I would say this has been the toughest year for several decades uh, for the oil and gas industry. We have seen the oil demand shrink by uh, more than 8%, between 8 and 9% last year. Brent prices have gone into a yo-yo mode, and we have seen for the first time in history WTI prices going negative, Rig count has plunged around the world, and we have seen the impact across many of the economic sectors with uh, airports being shut down, uh, road traffic being going to a standstill. Throughout the, S the COVID pandemic, uh, SPE uh, has seen the, low, uh, the toughest year uh, for uh, its income as many of the key events like OTC, uh, Offshore Europe, the um, ATC, IPTC and other events have not happened. Uh, and what the SPE has been able to do is a major move to virtual events 
with a great number of webinars, SPE Live, virtual distinguished lectures. We continue to focus on our strategic plan with lifelong learning, and then we focus on digital energy and collaborate with other organizations. We have split the MNI technical discipline, and then we are also uh, working on the second pillar of our strategic plan, which is a new platform for One Petrol and the digital journal petroleum technology as part of the knowledge transfer strategy, and then more and more SPE content available by video. Membership, we are still focusing, despite the circumstances, to broaden the membership base, but also at the same time, due to the difficult times, support our members in transition. And then last but not least, professional pride, where we are showcasing the industry contribution to sustainable development and the value of the oil and gas industry. If we look at going to the future, and this is a report that was published a few days ago by the International Energy Forum, showing the outlook for uh, energy demand from different organizations, the International Energy Agency, the OPEC, uh, and what we see is that in the uh, NDC scenarios, uh, essentially the oil and gas remain a key part of the uh, energy mix. Even in the sustainable development scenario, the uh, natural gas remain a, a significant part and so our industry is here to have a very strong role in all major plausible scenarios for energy supply and demand. If we want to achieve the very ambitious goals of the Paris Agreement, we need to decarbonize the energy sector. And in terms of wedges of decarbonization, the biggest one will be energy efficiency and uh, other technologies like CO2 capture and storage, hydrogen and geothermal, along with renewables. So for CO2 capture and storage, hydrogen and geothermal, the skills of our SP members will be very much in demand and the size of these new parts of the energy industry could be a comparable to the size of the oil and gas industry by 2050, 2060. We may ask ourselves whether the cycle uh, that where we have seen a 30% drop uh, in the activity and many of our colleagues, unfortunately, losing their uh, jobs in the industry, uh, it has been a very, very tough year. Uh, there are still major certainties on the end of the COVID-19 pandemic, and we certainly applaud the contribution of India in terms of being able to produce vaccines for the pandemic in very large numbers. Uh, we are seeing activity recovering in industrial sectors, but uh, transport, especially the airlines, remain in a difficult situation. With the uh, cohesion of OPEC and OPEC Plus, brand prices have firmed up north of 60. We went up to $64 this week. And then the, the, the last piece, which is the oil and gas activity in 2021, based on surveys of uh, major and independent companies, will, is expected to rise by about uh, between 8 and 10% on a global scale. And if we look at the, uh, the region where India uh, is, there was a drop uh, between India and Asia Pacific by 10% in 2020, but we should be back to the 2019 level in, the, uh, uh, in 2021. Middle East, uh, which has dropped by about 18% in uh, 2019, and this is an important region for, uh, for the India, uh, will be about flat, but then 2022 should be going back up thanks to the firming up of oil prices. So uh, 
I wanted to, uh, to finish on some remarks about the oil and gas sustainability model. The past oil and gas industry image was uh, mixed with uh, people remembering some of the uh, bad things that have happened in terms of uh, spills and, uh, and uh, other problems like the uh, Deepwater Horizon, but uh, not remembering that the essential part of the oil and gas industry in terms of economic development. Uh, over the last few years, the SPE has been focusing on promoting the, all the uh, good things that the industry is doing in terms of technology, in terms of international policy and governments, economic impact, health and safety, environmental protection, and social development. Not many know, people know that in the extraordinary rover mission that went into March, we are using some of the technologies that have been developed by the oil and gas industry to analyze samples so we can understand the past history of March uh, using our technologies. And then going to the future, the future will see an increased mix from renewables, but then we see as the renewables not competing with oil and gas, but uh, is being working together to uh, serve efficiently the uh, world development. And if we look at some of the initiatives that I wanted to highlight in the sustainability model of the SPE, the Gaia sustainability program, which has just been launched by the SPE, is a, a collaborative program and every region and every section is uh, invited to uh, participate in this very important initiative. And uh, it's actually uh, creating actions from all types to address the planet's sustainability challenges. And I'm sure you'll be hearing more uh, over the next coming weeks about the Gaia sustainability program. Uh, last year, we have launched the diversity and inclusion community which is to make sure that the oil and gas industry and our society uses all the skills from gender diversity and also ethnical diversity that could uh, help the uh, advance our industry. And uh, I wanted to highlight uh, one initiative that has been going on for the last few years is the business management and leadership uh, committee, which complements very nicely the technical development programs of the SPE by providing to our members the uh, soft skills and the business management and leadership skills that are required to, uh, to move up in the corporate ladder, but also to navigate through uh, tough circumstances and instill the spirit of resilience uh, to go through those cycles in the oil and gas industry. So I wanted to, congr to finish by thanking you, uh, members, committees, chairs, for very uh, valuable contribution of the, over the last 15 years to the petroleum industry and the Society of Petroleum Engineers. I want to thank you on behalf of the SPE for volunteering. I want to thank your companies and your universities for doing such a great work at supporting our mission. And I want to wish you many successes in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kamel, uh, for a wonderful, informative presentation. And it was great of you to take out some time for us. And I'm really sorry for keeping you waiting for long since our program started a bit late. Uh, and uh, another pleasure. thing, sorry? It's my pleasure. <laughs> uh, Kamel, uh, since you are not present in person here, uh, 
I would like to make an announcement that we would be sending a memento to Kamel uh, Benesur by Korea. So uh, a big hand for Mr. Benesur. Thank you. SPE has uh, their flagship conference and exhibition named Annual Technical Conference and Exhibition. And this year it is scheduled to be held in UAE, I think Dubai. And uh, it is then that Kamel will be formally taking over as SPE president. So currently he is president elect. So hopefully we'll meet at during 83. Hello, Mr. Bali. And uh, before I introduce the host, it's very important that uh, the industry supports uh, such programs. And we are extremely thankful for the today's sponsors, uh, Anvenire Energy. And Mr. Manish Maheshwari has taken a personal interest to support this program. Thank you very much. And uh, I would like to request you to come on the dais. And I'll also like to request uh, our Deepak Bhatnagar, the treasurer, and uh, Shri Rai Chaudhary ji, who is the past chair and the senior most member, to present a memento to the sponsors. I request Saji to hand over me the memento. Please, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Manish ji.